Olivia Wilde. What do you know about Olivia Wilde? Well, I'll tell you. The first thing you need to know is that Olivia Wilde is a feminist. And if you didn't know she was a feminist, check this picture out of her wearing a shirt that says feminist. Okay? And in case this shirt is not making clear that she's a feminist, she also once upon a time wore this skirt. And the skirt, if you can't read it and you're listening to this podcast, it says feminist, 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 feminist. Hello. It's like 300 times around the skirt in case you missed it. Olivia Wilde is a feminist. And in case you are someone who only speaks English, she also wore this. Yes, that is Olivia Wilde wearing a shirt that in French reads Solidarité Feminine. I don't know if I'm saying that right because I don't speak French, but I'm pretty sure it means that she's a feminist. And in case that wasn't abundantly clear to you that she was a feminist, just check her out wearing this pussy hat. Yeah, there she is. There she is. She's a feminist, guys. And it's pink because girls like pink. She's a feminist. Now, of course, like all good feminists, Olivia sometimes gets attacked by men. And she usually likes to get attacked by men when she's trying to further her career. So Olivia Wilde had a long relationship. She has two children and about a 10-year relationship with an actor named Jason Sudeikis. And it was convenient for her. She had a movie that she was directing and producing that is called Don't Worry, Darling. And in wanting to do press for this movie, it was convenient for her that she was going through this separation with Jason Sudeikis. And a processor served her papers while she was at uh, Comic-Con, I believe. Yeah, CinemaCon, rather. And so because this processor served her papers in public, which, by the way, has happened since the beginning of time, that processors like to do this because they know for a fact that a celebrity will be on a red carpet. Uh, there was a DJ named French Montana who got served at a club because he was making an appearance. But when it happens to Olivia Wilde, it is an attack, and it is an attack that can be used to promote her movie. So she gave this statement about being served papers relating to custody over their children. She said, quote, it was my workplace. In any other workplace, it would be seen as an attack. It was really upsetting. It shouldn't have been able to happen. There was a huge breach in security, which is really scary. It's scary. That's very scary when a processor comes to serve you papers. The hurdles that you had to jump through to get into that room with several badges, plus special COVID tests that had to be taken days in advance, which gave you wristbands that were necessary to gain access to the event. This was something that required forethought. Yeah, she's under attack, guys, and she was really, really scared because these papers were handed to her in a professional manner. And like I said, she's not a special snowflake. This has happened many times in the past to celebrities, but it happened to a woman who is also, did I mention, a feminist. She goes on to say, I hated that this nastiness distracted from the work of so many different people and the studio that I was up there representing. To try to sabotage that was really vicious, but I had a job to do. I'm not easily distracted. Oh, wow. She is just so brave. What a brave feminist woman Olivia Wilde is. Now, weigh this against, by the way, Jason Sudeikis's statement, which he gave about the incident, which sounds totally stable. He says, quote, the papers were drawn up to establish jurisdiction. Pardon, this is actually his representative giving the quote. Quote, papers were drawn up to establish jurisdiction relating to the children of Ms. Wilde and Mr. Sudeikis. Mr. Sudeikis had no prior knowledge at the time or place that the envelope would have been delivered, as this would solely be up to the process service company involved, and he would never condone her being served in such an inappropriate manner. Jason also went on to say the same thing in documents to the court. Uh, he said, essentially, I was horrified to see that she was served in such a public manner, and I deeply apologize for this. He sounds like a normal person. Of course, he had no idea that she was going to be served there, but this created a very good reason for her to get out into the press and to purport herself to be a victim so that people would buy tickets to her movie, which, by the way, everyone says kind of sucks. But that wasn't enough because you can take down one man, you know, feminist, you take down one man to get press. But what if you take down two people? Initially, uh, before she cast Harry Styles as the lead in this movie, Don't Worry, Darling, she had cast Shia LaBeouf. 
So Shia LaBeouf has notoriously struggled in the public sphere with alcoholism, with drugs. He's been to treatment centers. Olivia Wilde knows all of this. But the most notorious situation came about when FKA Twigs, his former lover and girlfriend, filed a lawsuit against him claiming uh, that she was being abused. Now, Olivia Wilde saw this as an opportunity, and since the public didn't know why exactly Shia LaBeouf was no longer in the film and her film was coming out, she basically gave a statement to Variety magazine, uh, which heavily implied that she dropped him because she was, of course, a feminist, and she would never want to condone this sort of person being on her set. She even talks about the ethos of her set, and he just did not go in, go in line with the kind of ethos that she wanted to have on this set. And... So, of course, the public ate this up and believed this until Shia LaBeouf came out and he replied to this and he released a letter that he wrote to her in response to the interview that she gave to Variety. Apparently, what she is saying just wasn't true at all. And he even released a video that she sent to him, begging him to stay in the film. First, let's watch the video. Shia. Shia, Shia. I just went riding my horse, very sweaty, but I wanted to reach out because I feel like I'm not ready to give up on this yet. And I too am heartbroken and I want to figure this out. And, you know, I think this might be a bit of a wake up call for Miss Flo. And I want to know if you're open to giving this a shot with me, with us, if she really commits, if she really puts her, her mind and heart into it at this point. And if you guys can make peace, and I respect your point of view, I respect hers, but if you guys can do it, what do you think? Is there hope? Is there hope? Will you let me know? Okay, bye. I don't know. Kind of sounds like she's begging Shia to be in the film. And on top of that, when she says Miss Flo, she's referring to Florence Pugh, who was the other lead actress on this movie. And she's sort of throwing her under the bus. Maybe maybe Miss Flo can get her stuff together. This coming, of course, from feminist Olivia begging to a guy to please stay on the film and that hopefully Miss Flo will get her stuff together and make this happen. But more importantly, I want to read, I want to read Shia LaBeouf's response to Olivia in this letter that he wrote to her, this email that he sent to her after seeing what she said in Variety. Now, again, I, as I mentioned, Shia LaBeouf has struggled with addiction, but he's clean now. And he has been sober for a while now. And he wrote her this email with a lot of clarity. And I think it deserves more airtime. He wrote, Olivia, I hope this finds you inspired, purposeful, fulfilled, and well. I pray every night that you and your family have health, happiness, and everything God would give me. No joke every night before I go to sleep. I have a little girl, Isabel. She is five months old and just beginning to develop the last half of her laugh. It's amazing. Mia, my wife and I have found each other again and are journeying toward a healthy family with love and mutual respect. I have embarked on a journey that feels redemptive and righteous. I write to you now with 627 days of sobriety and a moral compass that never existed before my great humbling that was the last year and a quarter of my life. I reached out to you a few months ago to make amends, and I still pray that one day you can find space in your heart to forgive me for the failed collaboration that we shared. What inspired this email today is your latest variety story. I'm greatly honored by your words on my work. Thank you. That felt good to read. I'm a little confused about the narrative that I was fired, however. You and I both know the reasons for my exit. I quit your film because your actors and I couldn't find time to rehearse. I have included as a reminder the screenshots of our text exchange on that day and my text to Toby. I know that you are beginning your press run for Don't Worry, Darling, and that the news of my firing is attractive clickbait, as I am still persona non grata and may remain as such for the rest of my life. But speaking of my daughter, I often think about the news articles she will read when she is literate. And though I owe, and I will owe for the rest of my life, I only owe for my actions. My failings with Twigs, quick break to remind you, Twigs is the ex-girlfriend that filed the lawsuit against him. My failings with Twigs are fundamental and real, but they are not the narrative that has been presented. There is a time and a place to deal with such things, and I am trying to navigate a nuanced situation with respect for her and the truth, hence my silence. But the situation with your film and my, quote, firing will never have a court date with which to deal with the facts. If lies are repeated enough in the public, they become truth. And so it makes it that much harder for me to crawl out of the hole I have dug with my behaviors to be able to provide for my family. Firing me never took place, Olivia. 
And while I fully understand the attractiveness of pushing that story because of the current social landscape, the social currency that it brings, it is not the truth. So I'm humbly asking as a person with an eye toward making things right, that you correct the narrative as best you can. I hope none of this negatively, negatively affects you and that your film is successful in all the ways that you want it to be. Every blessing to you, Shia. I mean, wow. What a, it's a beautiful letter. It's a beautiful letter, letter from a man that is going through a redemptive process. Uh, he ha- found God actually on the set of his last film um, in which he plays a priest, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure, but he has turned to the Catholic church and he is speaking about his faith journey. So Shia is a different man today than he was even three years ago. And the idea that Olivia would use his struggle to promote her film and also put out this lie that she dumped him because she's feminist AF. I mean, I really think that that illustrates her toxicity. Beyond this, and this is notable, the female lead actress, Florence Pugh, refuses to speak to Olivia. She refused She refused to attend all of the press junkets pertaining to the film as it came out. And on the actual day that it premiered, which she was contractually obligated to go to the premiere, she did not speak with the press. She did not speak to Olivia. And she was sat a few chairs apart from her so that she never had to engage in her. So apparently this feminist AF person can't even have a productive and respectful relationship with the person that she has cast in her film. Doesn't exactly sound uh, very feminist to me. Which then brings me to number four, which is the problematic relationships that she has, of course, dragging her ex into the public sphere, dragging Shia LaBeouf into the public sphere in a negative way. But also, I just want to mention that Olivia is about to be 40. She's 38 years old, and she is now engaged in this relationship with Harry Styles, who is a 28-year-old man. She has two children. Now, I'm not saying that relationships can't work between a woman who is 38 years old and a man who is 28 year old, but um, yeah, no, I am, I am saying that they tend not to work. So this is going to be interesting to see. I do not think it's going to work out for her. She, to me, seems to be a woman that is spiraling um, and is being publicly insane. She's Olivia Wilde is not a stable human being, and she needs to be called out for this toxicity. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Candace Owens. If you like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel and ring the bell to get notifications on new videos. To watch or listen to the full show, become a member today at dailywire.com slash subscribe.